Peter 5 7. We are reading from the message version of the Bible. It's a very short verse, but I like it. Very, very exciting indeed. Now it says, so shall we read it together? Those of you can see it. It says, it starts with live. Let's go. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. First Peter 5 7. Let's go again. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. First Peter 5 7. I know it's, it's the message rendition of the popular verse cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. I, I, I like Eugene, Eugene Peterson. He's always the late Eugene Peterson who has blessed us with the message Bible. Bringing the, the word alive and making the message inside of it amazing. Alright, so let's go. Now, the world has changed, whether we like it or not. COVID 19 has changed everything. People have lost their jobs, people are dying. In Ghana, only by God's grace. People have died, but not that many compared to other countries. Some days ago, someone called me, one of our church members called me and said to me that now when he slept, when he sleeps, he was always having panic attacks. For those of you who don't know, some of you have had it, you don't know that when you are there, you start becoming extremely afraid. And so as we were talking and trying to dig into where the source of this thing is, one of the things we came to conclusion was that, now this guy, you know some of you, if you are, your, your, your family is in Ghana and everyone is in Ghana, <laughs> you don't have a problem. But if you have your some relatives elsewhere, especially, you know, even in the USA, many, many, many Ghanaians have died. And so someone, uh, these things, even in Ghana, we, we, when we are talking, we say, oh, 10 people, only. But those 10 are family members, have family members. When they hear you say only, they are not very happy at all. And so for this guy, as we dive deeper and deeper into the issue, we realize that because his, he had very close family members, especially in New York, he was beginning to become afraid. The day, the death, especially one close friend of the, the person who she, the family member, had died. The day, what will happen? So each time he slept, he was having those extreme fear consuming him. Oh, but as we share the word of God, and the following day, I, 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 I messaged him on WhatsApp and I asked him, Hey, how, what, how, how was your night? These were his words and I quote, I slept like a baby. And I pray that as we share to this, this word this morning, you will also come to the place of peace. Amen. So today, let's title our message, Tomorrow, 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 Tomorrow. Interesting. Now, what, what, is, what is tomorrow? <laughs> when is tomorrow? Tomorrow is any time in the future that you have no idea about. So tomorrow can be the next second, the next second. It can be the next minute, it can be the next day, it can be the next week. Anything that you don't know. Human beings, have, human beings have one great desire to want to know the future. And we all have it, it's an innate something. You know, that's why in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31, God himself, in talking to the Israelites, says, Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. You see, we as human beings, we want to be in control. If only we... And you would think that it's only in Ghana that we consult these sort of malams and things to know the future. You know, now, last time I was walking around, in Ghana here, somewhere in Speak Test Road, I saw these guys that have these turbans on, they will go around and then they will say, hey, come, let me read your part. 
and you were reading people's palms, and they will tell you. And people come and tell me, recently I was dealing with a certain guy, he says, but, you know, when I do those things, they, they are also true. You see, <laughs> very, very funny. Who told you that demons and spiritual forces and magicians don't also have a truth, they know the truth? Let me show you one truth that they know. They know that God is God. <laughs> That's also true. Isn't that true? So they know some sort of truth. But they have limitations. Look at Daniel chapter 4 verse 7. In the book of Daniel, the Bible says that uh, from the verse 7 to 8, it says, When the magicians, now this is, uh, the king had a dream and he wanted an interpretation. The Bible says that when the magicians, enchanters, and astrologers, diviners came, I told them the dream. This is the king talking. But they could not interpret it for me. The, 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 the magician, they had a job. They had a job in the king's palace. Yet, they could not interpret this dream. Last time I was reading, uh, checking out some history of America. And I even got to know that at a point in time, even the USA, sometime, I think one of the world wars, even consulted <laughs> diviners to show them where a certain bomb had landed. So also, <laughs> there's an innate desire for all of us to want to know the future so that we can be in control. How many of you would like to know what's going to happen next week? Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> you want to know. Oh, that Tuesday you realize that somebody's going to call you and give you $50,000. Uh, some of you today now, nah, you're going to order some things. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's very wonderful to know the future. In uh, 2013, I went to India and I was operating. God gave me the power to operate very highly in the prophetic. Hey, you know, again, everywhere if you want any ministry that you want to grow very fast, start with the prophetic ministry. Everybody will come and, uh, you know, I know those days I used to go for a certain prophetic service. I've been going sad, thinking that the man of God, the prophet, will one day see me and that they be uh, he'll call people around me. Then one day he was preaching and he came to sit in front of me. I said, Oh God, today is my day, oh God. And when he was preaching, even one time he stretched his hand and he was making an example and he touched me. I said, once he has touched me, something will pass through his hand and he will know that it is my message. He didn't give me any message. Up until today. What a shock. So prophetic is, is because we all like it. I've gone to prophetic all night where people are sleeping during the prayer time. Hey, 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 hey. When it was time for the prophetic service, Nobody blinks back. Nobody blinks back. We all want to know the future. But even that, the Bible says that we can't even trust prophet because if you look at prophecy is good. It's good. It's something we should, you know, desire. The Bible says we sh it's something we should desire. But in Daniel chapter 4 verse 8, we know that um, uh, first Corinthians 10 verse 3, we read that Prophecy, you can front up and have all the gifts of prophecy. But have not love. But have not love. What's love? It's just simply character. So one of the questions I know some of you will be asking me is that is, is, is prophecy is, 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 so I'm talking about tomorrow and all of these things. Is it bad to plan for tomorrow? For example, you want to check and see whether uh, tomorrow I will eat uh, what food will we eat tomorrow? Okay, well, yeah, we, need, we don't have rice there. Tomorrow we have to go and shop, buy rice. Hey, we don't have any chicken. Only eggs. Otherwise, if we don't go and buy it tomorrow. So some people ask him, Pastor Kiki, is it alright to plan for the future? Of course. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says it very clearly. That in his heart, a man plans his course. So, we plan our course. But 
The answer there is that. But the Lord determines his steps. Plan. If you don't plan, you know that your rent is up is due. You are sitting down. You won't plan. You know where you have no money. Your landlord will remove. Now it's raining now here in Arab. I don't know where you are if it's raining. If it's not raining or it's snowing or whatever, you still have to. If you have not planned, you stay in the snow or you stay in the rain. Now, Jesus himself in Luke chapter 14 told us to plan. In Luke 14, he says that Jesus was talking about planning. He said that suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he first not sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? Again, in the verse 29, he continues and says, For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish, like how Ghana, many buildings are uncompleted. Ghana, there are so many uncompleted buildings that we smokers have and people who want to have sex, fornicate, have plenty of places. A lot of people have fornicated in uncompleted buildings. We smokers, I met the one boy. Somebody came to report a certain boy to me. He said, He went to smoke in an uncompleted. Ghana, uncompleted is part of our language to the extent that somebody saw a convertible, he says, This is an uncompleted car. You see. <laughs> you see. So, Jesus says, Plan. So, Jesus is not against planning. Planning is powerful. Or don't you think so? Yeah, it's a powerful thing. Now, so, but when it comes to the planning for the future, God wants us to make room for him in the future. So as you are thinking about tomorrow, make plans with God inside there somewhere. Look at James 4.13. James is talking about him talking about tomorrow. We planning for tomorrow. Look at this. It says, now listen to you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this and that city. Spend a year there. Carry on business and make money. Is it? You are making plans. Tomorrow I will go here and I will do this and I will do that. Now, James continues to say in the verse 14 of James chapter 4 that why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. I was looking at a, a documentary of the video of a man one of the avowed atheists that ever lived in the in the Western world is called Christopher Hitchens. Surprisingly, his name is even Christopher, lover of Christ. Yet he was an avowed atheist. And unfortunately, with all his you know things, he got to a time. Unfortunately, he contracted a, a, a esophageal cancer. And he himself, in his interview, says, "Life is so short." We are we are part of breath. You are making all these plans. Tomorrow, tomorrow we shall. Very, very important. Now, so failure to involve God. Now, if you fail to involve God in your future plans, two things can happen. The first thing that can happen is that you can it can make you very proud. If you fail, you are thinking about tomorrow, like how things is saying. You are planning for tomorrow. Say, I will do this, I will do this. You, it can make you proud. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 18. One guy said that. Very, very, was making plans without God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 18. Then he said, this is a rich man who had become super rich. His business was booming. Like those who have done who are, who are mask business. Their business is booming. Mask. I had to buy a mask this week. Mask. Or three mask. So mask business is booming. Yeah. People are using, I hear people are washing their clothes and cutting it into mask. Now we don't even know what we are smelling. Anyway, I won't go there. So now, it's says. He's a rich man whose business is booming. He said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my bonds and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grains and my goods. The verse, then goes on to the verse 19. And then I will say to myself, you have plenty 
of goods laid up for what? How many years? For many years. He has calculated and known that. He and the Ashantis have something in Ghana. The, the Ashantis have a province. Only in here, a bon sound. He and poverty. They have now become parallel lines. They will never meet. You can have it. He says, take it easy. He says, ha, ha, take it easy. I know a certain guy. One way he takes it easy is his. If he gets some small money, he goes to KFC. I know him. Small money, say, you know, you know, they will go to KFC, they will order plenty of food. <laughs> he said, This is the guy. He said, Take it easy. Drink and make merry. You see? Very, very interesting. But the verse 20. Oh, that's where everything is. So, Baba said to him, You fool! Please, if you just tune in, don't think that I'm a pastor insulting. I'm reading the Bible. Luke 12 20. So you just tune in, relax. But God said, listen to me, I didn't say it. God said, You fool! Say, Pastor, you are stressing that part. I'm not. They said an exclamation mark there in this Bible that I excuse. Exclamation. They, they taught you English. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. Then, then who will get, sorry? Who will get? I know a certain boy. His father never made him drive his car. Every day. Even when he washes it and he mistakenly sparks the car, the father is in the hall. Hey! Put up there. Unfortunately, one day the father died. What the boy did to the father's car? What the boy did to the father's car? As if he was saying, Daddy, come and look at me. That is me. Anyway. So if you don't understand, this is a tree language. This thing. So if you fail to make God put God in your future plans, you'll be proud. God, you are making all these things, telling yourself, take life easy. But then again, the second thing that can happen if you fail to um, uh, 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 um, put God in your future plans is that it will also make you very anxious. To make you anxious. Now, the um, in Luke chapter twelve, verse four. Jesus is talking to um, uh, his disciples and he says to them, I tell you my friends, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and, no, and, and can do no more. Then he goes on in the verse 5 and says, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear whom after killing the body has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. The verse, then continues the verse 6 says that, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yes, none of them. Not even one of them is forgotten by God. And he ends the verse 7 by saying that, Indeed, the very hairs of your head are numbered, so don't be afraid. If you fail to involve God into the future, you realize that fear will grip you. You are afraid. Hey, what if I go out right now and Corona is walking in the air and I kiss it? What if I'm going right now? And then I'm robbers. Go and catch me. There's so many things that can happen. Now, so God then advised us in, the, in his word to have a strategic plan for tomorrow. And the way to plan strategically for tomorrow, according to God's word, is to, you know, put Jesus Christ into your future. Make room for God in your tomorrow plans. And so I'm going to give you three very powerful ways by which you can, or four, I can give you four. Four powerful ways by which you can employ God in your future. Or have God in your plans for the future. And so, in order for you to have, make God part of your future plans or for your tomorrow, to prevent the anxiety I talked about or the pride you need to do these things the first thing you need to do is to ensure that you see a lot of the reason why we are so anxious about God about the future is that we don't have a relationship with God or we have a relationship with God but the relationship is not tight it's not tight so we are able to claim 
the promises that are of God, you are unable to claim them. Because we and God are not tied. And one of the reasons that we, we and God are not tied is that we are always thinking, yes, we have done some very bad things. You have watched some pornography. You were bored. So you watch one or two bottles. Or it can be that you did some very, very bad things. You transferred some which you are not supposed to transfer. Or I don't know what you did. Yeah, it is very bad. What you did was very bad. But what do you do? Now you are thinking about the future and your heart is beating. So what do you do? You need to connect with God into the future. And I have here this scripture. In first in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, he says that all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. God has reconciled you and I to himself. And said that this that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, verse 19. Not counting men's sins against them. God wants to have favor with you. God wants to enjoy you. Why are you pushing yourself away from God? Yes, you have done those horrible things, but God is calling you to come close. You see, in our relationship with God, it is not about us. It's about God. It's not about what we have done. It's about what God has done. This week I had a very interesting quote with, uh, from uh, this man in Nigeria, Abel Damina. And I was sharing it with uh, uh, Valeria. And it's a very interesting one. He says, some of us are thinking that some people we, some people we think are in hell we will be surprised to we'll go to heaven they are there. Because God is a businessman. He won't send his son Jesus Christ to come and die. And allow everybody to fly off and fall. If you are a businessman, you have invested in a business. Which one will you be for? Will you be wanting the business to survive or you want the business to die? Some of you are sitting there, feeling very far away from God. And he's making you afraid of the future. If only you knew, if only you knew how much God must pull you to himself. That's why businesses, every business, when I did some small accounting, they wrote there, there's provision for debt, but but there's provision for precision. They made all, all businesses make all this room because they know, they want the thing to stand. So they put money aside, so when the thing is shaking, they use the money to support it. You are good for him. How about that? Take it. Count him. He's always reconciling us to himself in Christ. Not counting men's sins against them. God is looking on you with favor. Yeah, I know you are thinking that you are not good enough. You have done so many bad things against God. You have spoken some bad things against God. You have said some things in the past. Yeah, maybe God didn't come through for you the way you are looking for. So you, you said some things like how Jacob's Job's wife said it. Can't God cry and die? And I said, huh? But now you have regretted. Come back. When you connect with this God, I'm always quoting John 3.16. He says that it is for God who loved the world, not for you who chased you. Oh, hallelujah. And in the Matthew 6, chapter 6, where we see all of the don't worry verses. The verse 33 says that we should seek ye first God and all other things shall be added. Now, the second thing you do is that from that good relationship with God, take steps to do what you can do. Do what you can do. A 
Ecclesiastes 11 4 says that whoever watches the wind will not plant. You see, if you are worried about the future, some of us are worried about, so worried about the future. We are crippled. We can't do anything. You see, but when you have a relationship with God and God has spoken something to you, or you are having an idea, go ahead. Listen, I know you are afraid of the future, but to be afraid of the future, you are afraid of the future. You don't know which one to do. There are so many people. I don't know what God is telling me. I want to know my purpose. I want to know. Start doing something. The Bible says, He whoever Ecclesiastes level four, whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the cloud will not reap. Step out and do something. The verse 5 says that as you do not know the part of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God and of all things. Let's go. In the verse 6, I like the verse 6. Sow your seed in the morning and at the evening, let not your hands be idle. For you don't know which one will succeed. If you want to be able to conquer the fear of tomorrow, use today to do something. Do something today. God is telling you, God is giving you some ideas. Do them today, now. It will strengthen you. Listen, do what you can do and leave the things you can't do for God. Moses had a rod. He just stretched it and God did the rest. You have a rod. You have something. Huh? I'll preach a message titled that. You can ask for it. You have something. It's a whole scripture. Listen, do it. As you do it, it will empower you for tomorrow. And I love what the psalmist says. In Psalm 1, verse 3, he says that the best thing was a relationship with God. That's why I started by saying you have to be happy with God. Now, when you set yourself apart and you have the relationship with God, he said that you will be blessed like you become like a, a tree planted by um, 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 streams of water which yields fruit in this season and whose leaf does not wither. I like the last part. It says, Whatever he does prospers. I see you prospering as you step out in faith to do what God is, is giving you to do. When I look back on my life, I see, as, you see, don't be afraid of what will happen tomorrow. Today, do something because that thing you are doing will prosper. If only it's according to what God is telling you. Now, the second thing, the third thing I want you to do in order to conquer the to, to conquer the fear of the future is to cast all your anxieties on God. Cast all your anxieties upon God. Cast it. You know the word cast is when you hear cast. Nowadays you don't go to Bola anymore. In Ghana, something to go Bola, you go to Bola. Those that when you get this, then you carry it, you walk and go and throw. When you get there, the place is smelling, so you just throw it. You throw it, you don't even go there. Throw, cast, cast a stone, cast it. Hey, what is going to happen in the future? Am I going to die? My heart is going to go. Cast it, cast all your anxieties. What is an anxiety? You see, when you go to the all of the uh, in psychology, they have something they call a whole lot of uh, things they call anxiety disorders. Anxiety disorders. Do you know what they are? They are all things that come about as a result of anxiety. And one of them are they call a phobia. 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 It's not heart of phobia. Phobia. Fear. Or something. They are all anxiety disorders. One of them. This week now, I was at there, certain girl says, <laughs> I'm claustrophobic. See, don't let us get into America things. That we are all becoming like Americans. They yeah, we like saying some words. What is claustrophobic? Like, they are here. They have closed this door. Big room. They have closed the door. They say, hey, 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 hey. I can't breathe. Hey, when there's air around you, you can't breathe. It's because you are thinking about, you are afraid. You are thinking about what is not even real. Cast it! Cast it! Cast it unto God! You are thinking about a lot of things. Cast it! Hey, what if my mother dies? Cast it! Hey, what if Jesus comes and I don't go to heaven? Cast it! What if I, 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 I don't... Uh, the, 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 the one scene, they don't write the one scene again. And my life slows down. Cast the whole world, everybody's including your husband. They are waiting. They are in the house. So relax. 
is your problem? Where are you running to? Hey, my life is uh, uh, waiting back. Uh, catch it. Do move forward. Everybody is at home. Don't relax. Amen. I see somebody casting all your cares. Amen. First Peter 5 7 says, Cast all your anxiety upon him because what? He cares for you. He cares. Hey, God cares for you. Now, now the best way to cast your care onto God is to pray. Pray. Yeah, you are feeling some things. You are feeling some things. Pray, pray, pray. Some time ago, I woke up um, early in January. I woke up in the, uh, in the middle of the night. Very, very, very hot. Very hot temperature. Then the devil started saying some things to me. Going to die. Ah, I didn't even entertain all those thoughts. I just started. Kapata. I'm coming to your home. Pray. Talk to God. Cast it. Philippians 4 6. Huh? He says, Do not be anxious about anything. See the anxiety thing has come there again. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Without him. Let your request be known to God. In this area, I have a special quote in that area that says that. If you haven't prayed, don't worry. And if you have prayed, why worry? As for tomorrow, the things about tomorrow, they can trap you. But as you pray, you see that the peace of God will flood your heart. In praying, the Bible tells us in this same verse, Philippians 4, 6, to do something. In the Philippians 4, 6, it tells us to do something. It tells us of a certain way in which we should pray. And that's why I told you about those who can't speak in tongues. Even if you can't speak in tongues, use this one. I preached a whole sermon about it, I think, two years or so ago or last year. It says there, with, by prayer and petition, with what? Thanksgiving! Do you know what Thanksgiving will do to you? Thanksgiving will increase your faith. How will Thanksgiving increase your faith? It will let you know that God has done it before. God has done it before. And if you know he has done it before, you are strengthened that he will do it again. There was a song I, 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 many years ago, I think 2011, when we went to Gambia, we, 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 we learned it. Very, very interesting song. It says, God has done it again. He has done it again. Hallelujah. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He has the power to save. He never fails. God has done it again. You see, he didn't say God has done it. God has done it again. And that's going to be your story. You are every day going to see God doing things again and again and again. That's why your next miracle is here. When you are a thankful person, you will know that this is no new. You will know that the last time you almost had an accident, ever saved you. You will know that the last time it was, it was so tight, yes, money came into your account, you don't even know who said that money. Can you be trustworthy? Can you, can you trust God and know that He is trustworthy? And thank, thank people keep seeing miracles and they are not surprised. Finally, finally, empower your faith. The Bible says that your words, last week we talked about it, your words carry power. And you see, let me show you what this Matthew 6 31 is saying. I, I had never seen it that way until I was watching a video by a man of God, Andrew Woman. He said it, and I saw it. It says, do not, so do not, Matthew 6 31 says, so do not worry by saying. Don't worry by saying. A lot of us worry through our words. 
Huh? You see, and it gives you examples of what you, the words you say that show you are. A lot of us worry or become anxious through our sayings. So do not worry by saying, "What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear?" These statements look like very innocent statements, but hidden in those statements are worry. Hey, hey, did you hear me? Hey, 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 a lot of us are catching on to this unfortunate, unfortunate saying. It sounds like a joke. Some of them even appear as jokes. By June, the yeah. We have all bought into it. By June, the yeah. end. You are saying, sir. By June, by June, yeah, you'll be so alive and healthy. Ah, I don't know where this coughing people came and this coughing thing has become popular in this short few weeks. Now, coffins have become our toys. People have sat down. Somebody is even about to create. You are listening to me tomorrow. You have said that in a few minutes, you are coming to create a video with that coffin. Change your mind. Repent. Repent from that coffin. Be careful. I see you. You are about to use it. You have this downloaded TikTok. You are about to do this thing. God that you downloaded TikTok. You are, coming, you are coming to use it. Stop! Stop and drink coffee. <laughs> I hear somebody who did. Do now or something. Forgot to type it. Type instead of coffee, type coffee. So they brought in coffee. So type well. So be very careful. Say things, empower your faith. Empower your faith. Yeah, you see, I don't know why when we are saying the negative things, it doesn't feel fake. But when we are saying the positive things, it feels fake. Isn't it funny? Hey? No, I say, hey, meho, in, in, in the tree language, say, meho, hey, meho, meho. But you, let's change it and start making it. Metias, metias, you say, they are cast out of the time of life. Well, you are not there. Hmm? We are going to empower our faith. Amen. What else we say? Jesus himself says, don't worry by saying. A lot of us worry by saying. Why don't we empower our faith with new words? And so, in our call to action, Jesus lives so I can also live. So I, I so I can.